Hello, everybody. It is March 15th. We're back for another Node Operator Roundtable, and uh, we'll start with an update from Stephen on uh, progress with Leap 4.0. Great. Thank you, Daniel. So uh, latest update as it pertains to Leap V4.0.0 .0 is that uh, we are tentatively closing in on a code freeze this week. Um, it's likely going to either be today or tomorrow, uh, which would mean a decent likelihood that we would cut an RC as soon as early next week. Um, so that's kind of what we're closing in on. Um, and as we've discussed in the past, I think it would be a great idea to set up a future meeting to really flesh out and discuss at length some of these features. Sounds good. Any questions? All right. And then with that, I'll turn it over to Brian. Um, I think, Brian, before we get into the special node types, um, some feedback on support, I believe. Yep. Uh, even before we get to that, I think it now would be the an appropriate time to kind of give the high level overview of of um, for four point zero the release that's coming up. Um, you know, note that we will be giving a more detailed um, overview in a coming node operator call, uh, and in that discussion, we would love to sort of hear your questions and answer them in details. Um, this is intended as just a, a quick overview of, of what the themes of this release uh, are. So the, you know, the first thing is that we, we did focus on higher performance with uh, multi-threading features. So um, there's, there's two big ones there, which is um, ship multi-threading uh, and parallelized um, transaction execution for read-only transactions. Um, yeah, and so together those, you know, allow us to sort of offload a, a, a number of uh, computationally intensive things off of the main application thread um, so that it can focus its efforts on things that have to be processed serially. Um, so that's the, that's the first kind of big theme. Um, Another one is around uh, reduced latency and faster block propagation. So um, the first feature here is that we we do have schedule-based auto peering uh, for node operators, particularly for block producers. So if you're a block producer, uh, you can configure, we talked about this a little bit in, in a previous call, but you can configure sort of the um, a mapping between block producer accounts and connection details um, so that uh, your node will automatically um, attempt to connect to and allow connections from block producers that are in proximity to you in the block producer schedule. Um, and these don't sort of count against the um, the, the max connections uh, setting um, if you turn this on, but it is limited in terms of how many uh, block producers um, will connect within this kind of pool, right? So the end result of this is that it should be a lot simpler for block producers to uh, ensure that they will receive the last block um, as as with as short of a path basically as possible so that they can get started without delay on their first block and they can be good citizens and um, ensure that their last block gets to uh, the next block producer with with minimal delay. Um, and, you know, not having to do any kind of uh, manual finagling to make that happen. And then the other feature within this theme is around wider validation for for block relays. Um, so so now, before you've fully validated a block, um, as long as certain conditions are met around, like yeah, this is signed by a um, an entity that should have produced this block, right? Um, you can go ahead and immediately uh, immediately relay that onwards uh, to. Um, you know, to the to the rest of your peers, um, and then uh, there's also um, I, I'm realizing it's not in my notes here, but there's also a feature around um, 
do, 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 what is it called? Um, oh my gosh, help me, Kevin. What's the other uh, faster propagation thing we did uh, that I failed to write in my notes? Um, um, yeah, so it's also moved off the main thread. Was that the other one? So that it, it can actually, as a block comes in, it gets validated. It does block header validation, verifies the signature, and then relays that that block onto its peers, and that can happen as long as the node is 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 in sync. That can happen without actually hitting the the main thread. It, was that the other one? Well, the, so that is one. Um, that's like details of this one. Um, right. But there's another thing, and it's a big one um, that we did. And why can I not think of it right now? Um, holy cow! Uh, Just for clarity, if you're thinking about the optimization of block start and release time, that did not make it into the release. So that that is not in scope for this release. Oh, right. Thank you. That's why it's not in my notes. There, there we go. Um, yeah, the, the other thing, though, somewhat related to that is um, the block log is now thread safe. And so if in the net plugin, if you're serving blocks from your, from your node, from the net plugin, it does not need to reach into the main thread. So you can actually you can actually sync from a node. The node can serve out blocks without impacting the main thread at all. Yeah, so you, um, you get another extra preview there. Uh, we've been working on this, which is why it was on my mind, but but I pulled the notes from our um, from our GitHub, which is all public. So of course, if you want to know these things well in advance of me saying these things, of course, you can just uh, stalk our, our GitHub. Um, uh, but yeah, we are also working on um, uh, oh my gosh, why is my brain skipping? Optimizing <laughs> the start and release timing of uh, block. Right, exactly. Um, all right, moving on. Since since for some reason uh, my uh, uh, needle can't find the groove on that one, we'll, move, we'll keep moving into uh, uh, sort of state, state and history data, blocks, logs, that sort of stuff. Um, so one thing that we've... Uh, brought in is a snapshot scheduling API so that you can um, manage snapshot requests in advance and, and just overall have greater flexibility in creating and managing snapshots uh, automatically. Um, we've also added the Prometheus exporter plugin, um, which you know instruments the, the various plugins in Nodios and exposes that data to a Prometheus uh, endpoint so that you can do analysis, monitoring, et cetera, uh, with Prometheus. If, if I might on that one, uh, you know, during the RC, and that's true of all this stuff, obviously, you know, we'll be looking for, for input there. So, you know, for the Prometheus, you know, I think we somewhat considering that as, you know, okay, the Prometheus plugin is there, it's, it's ready to use. Now, what would you like to see added that should be tracked? So what's there somewhat just kind of a minimum um, yep. amount of kind of data. So what else would you like? It's kind of the, when you're playing with it in our sheet, let us know. Yep. Yeah. We, we, uh, sort of purposefully took a minimal approach to like what, uh, stats it exposes. Cause this is sort of the zero to one, you know, first release for this. Um, and yeah, so, so it has a, a minimal set of very useful stats, but if there's other things that are important, uh, to you for, monitoring purposes, analysis purposes, whatever, um, you know, let us know with a, with a, um, you know, an issue on the, uh, leap, um, repository. Okay. And then finally, we've got, uh, sort of broadly dynamic log splitting. This is, this is for both block logs and for ship logs. Um, so basically you can define, um, you know how how to split logs and how many splits you want to you want to keep and and sort of automatically age out uh, older logs uh, by either deleting them or moving them to some some other form of cold storage. Cool. So that's a preview for um, for version four. And as Daniel said, so speaking of versions, <laughs> we wanted to seek some feedback on sort of the broader concept of uh, version support uh, for Leap in particular, uh, other other repositories, this is, um, or products I should say, are, are, this is also an important concept, but as this is a node operator call, Leap um, 
and Nodios are kind of the critical things to talk about here. And um, so, you know, our goal, of course, is to provide the support that critical node operators need. Um, you know, critical node operators include not necessarily limited to like block producers, exchanges, uh, service providers, you know, folks who are um, providing history APIs, et cetera, that sort of thing. Um, so we want to make sure that the support we're providing is, is what they need to be able to provide those services effectively. Um, some of the things when we say support, um, what we're talking about is, um, you know, ensuring that we've got working builds for a certain version, maintaining the documentation for it, um, debugging defect reports, patching security issues and bug fixes, supporting compatibility for, for critical utilities and, um, ensuring compatibility with other supported versions. Uh, and when we say compatibility, you know, this could be network compatibility, like log compatibility, the state database, snapshots, the ability to replay, all those sorts of things. Um, and of course the trade-off, you know, like in an ideal world, well, I don't know about ideal, but like in a dream world, <laughs> We could just support every version forever and it would always be backwards compatibility or backwards compatible. Um, but of course, the reality is that the more versions that we support, um, the more drag that makes that we could mean that we can't move as fast as we uh, would like to uh, with future versions. And so, of course, the simplest, taking this to ideal in the other extreme, the simplest thing would be that we only support the latest stable release. Um, and so what I wanted to get feedback on from, from this audience is sort of both for yourself and for uh, any other entities that you have sort of good information about. Um, what Are there any reasons why that would be insufficient, us, us supporting the, the latest stable version? Um, and if so, you know, give me some background there and, and let me know a little bit about what what you do need um, so that we can, you know, take that into our sort of decision-making process for, for determining how we will support versions in the future for Leap. So with that, I'll open up the floor for anybody who has opinions or experience here. Well, not too many comments, so I was going to see if somebody else would comment before me. I guess not. Mm -hmm. I guess, uh, you know, supporting the latest version is fine, as long as the latest version doesn't have regressions mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, are not fixed, right? So if we look at, like, 3.2 today, the you know, state history doesn't work quite as well as 3.1, and there's not a active campaign to fix it quickly and address those issues. So then people are still on 3.1. So it depends really how fast, uh, you know, the, the issues are repaired on the latest stable. Otherwise people are going to ask to fix things on the old stable because, well, you know, that's yeah. the one that's actually stable because the latest one is not actually stable. So, uh, I think we need some, uh, commentary in that regard about what the plans are to keep the latest stable more stable uh, before we can comment about, uh, you know, written, you know, support for older stable version. So if we look at other blockchain stacks, like if you're not on the latest patch, you know, the like 3.2.1, like the dot one part, then like you're out of support, mm -hmm. right? So. You know that that's uh, kind of the extreme, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, I, you know, there's some happy medium there. But anyway, right, that's my comment. The stable version is not stable. That thing. Yeah, and I would say I, I wonder if that somewhat related, like, you know, the fix is in the branch. We just haven't cut a release. And I'd say maybe one of the reasons we haven't cut a release is because before we cut a release, we need to cut a three, two, one, and then, uh, which has the current fixes in it because we're supporting it and we don't like to release 
um, a fix in an upper version before we release it in, in the, you know, in the previous version. And so that causes us actually to be slower about cutting movies since I think, because we are supporting so a, a broad range. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's an excellent point about the fact that, yeah, the reason you want support on three, two, one is because you can't use three, two at the moment uh, for shit. And so obviously you need three, two, one, oh, no. three, two, three, one, I'm sorry, three, one, uh, supported because yeah, you can't use three, two right now. So yeah. Good point. So that's why, you know, like I, I sent the ping a few weeks ago. So is there a new release of three, two coming? And then everybody's like, well, oh, yeah, but we're focused on 4 0, so we're not doing it. Okay. So, sure. So then you're forcing the community to stay on 3 1. Right. That's the that's the decision and outcome of doing not having a release. So, other release, other blockchains that that force you to current use the current release also have much more frequent releases than we do here. You know, it, you, you might get three releases in a week. Okay. That's not ideal. Oh, like, yeah, right. But let's not kid ourselves. But the point is, you know, it's faster than every, I don't know, two months or something. Like yeah. If there's a patch that's reasonable that seems like, oh, yeah, it's fixing people's problem, well, then do a release. So maybe there's some, you know, how, how do we speed up the release process? Do we need more automated tests or whatever so we can push the releases up faster? Like this, obviously, if it's a huge task to generate a release, then you're reluctant to do releases. Yeah, one one side note I'll, I'll mention on that. Um, it's not a panacea by any means, but we have something I didn't mention in 4.0 is that uh, there's a performance harness uh, in it. Um, it is it is not comprehensive by any means at this stage, um, but it will over time help us to, in an automated fashion, understand if there are performance regressions. Um, so um, anyway. Um, Aaron, I'm I'm curious about the um, sort of the service provider perspective on this. Um, you know, is there anything unique to providing, um, you know, providing services with those that that changes how you think about what you need from sort of supported versions. I am a little lost at what we're talking about since I just joined. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't realize that you uh, only recently joined. Yeah. So we're talking about, um, I'm, I'm trying to seek feedback on what uh, node operators such as BPs, exchanges, and, and you know, broadly service providers need um, as far as supported versions. Um, and of course, I can go into like the details of what we mean by supported, but I'll leave it abstract for the moment. Um, the trade-off being, of course, that the more supported versions that we um, that we maintain, you know, then potentially the slower we move on on future releases. Um, so, you know, the, the two extremes are, of course, like, we support everything, and the other extreme, we only support the latest stable, right? Um, and so that's, yeah, that's what we're kind of getting feedback on. Matthew's provided some feedback so far on you know, from a from a sort of block producer node operator perspective, um, I'm curious about also sort of. Uh, I know I know you operate obviously as a node operator and block producer, but uh, I'm curious too about the perspective. If there's anything unique with using nodes to provide services, right? Like um, as it relates to version support. I don't know that I have anything immediately offhand. I mean, I I don't think we're a group that typically cares about what's supported. Um, we will run what we need to run, and we will hack together what we need to hack together. Um, like, I, again, I don't have a lot of context, but um, like the dropping of Ubuntu 18 support, like, cool we don't really care about that we'll continue to run 18 and if we have problems we probably will solve them ourselves um we do uh i guess in a very limited team size um 
if we were forced to migrate, like we are during a hard fork for whatever reason, you know, that was not a hard fork because of some sort of support issue or whatever. I mean, that is a burden when you're running, I don't know, a hundred node EOS instances or something. Um, but in terms of supported versions, I mean, I get that it's just, it's not going to be getting security updates or performance fixes or anything like that. I just, I guess I don't really, I'm kind of rambling here, but I don't have anything concrete as to how it would impact a service provider over uh, any of the other types of operations. And then you have just weird situations like us where we're like, we're going to push through it anyways. We don't need a whole lot of support. I mean, changes are awesome, and once there's a change we need, we're going to be upgrading, but... Right. I don't know. I don't know if that was useful or if I'm... <laughs> no, it, it was it was helpful. It's sort of a... The, the a unique other, persona. Go ahead. The other consideration here is, like, when support for things is removed from a new version, that creates resistance to upgrade or... For example, when APIs are not exactly compatible, even though they all say V1 slash whatever, yep. uh, then, you know, people, well, I can't upgrade because it removes something and somebody depends on that. So if you're thinking about from a service provider perspective, right, you're not in control of everybody who's using your API. So if you, if you want to allow node operators to be able to upgrade easily, we need to make sure that there's no differences in the supported APIs uh, in order to to let those upgrades happen. Right, unless it's a conscious decision to to remove something and we're, you know, um, we're willing to take the resistance that that creates, right? So. Well, yeah, so, and that removal has been communicated well in advance and everybody in the community knows about it. And then when the service provider then can do a rollout and say, well, it was already communicated, so therefore we cannot remove it. Yeah. Yep, but yeah, we, we've had situations in the past where the, the API has changed, and you know, there there was there's no control over keeping the old one versus the new. One. The good, the new Git block stuff might be a good example of that. Like, when do we, when do we flip that on, and how many old clients are going to be broken? Like, I guess from our point of view, we don't provide paid services. It's all free to clients that use it, so. We don't necessarily have to consult with anybody when that change happens. Um, we can do it at will, but it likely will break some clients that are trying to use it um, that are compatible with how to deserialize the new approach or whatever. You know, old AP or old SDKs won't know what they're receiving. That's not necessarily our problem. We have no SLAs or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's like, when do you pull that trigger? And that's kind of that burden. And I know we're kind of wandering off over what's supported, but that is kind of what is supported at the API level. It's like, how long do we support the version one get block as we roll out the version two, essentially? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think this also brings me into um, perhaps a strange space for this call, but uh, the, you know, I'm, I'm, working on getting feedback from sort of exchange node operators as well. I know that none of them are, I assume that nobody on this call is, is an exchange uh, or, or related to an exchange in any way. Um, uh, but that said, I, I, I predict that they've got some sort of unique behaviors as it relates to upgrades, um, compared to, uh, a very engaged, um, you know, antelope and EOS focused group like this. So. Um, okay. Uh, Kevin or Steven, before we move off of this topic, do you have any, um, any other sort of probing questions on this line of questioning or Zach too? I know Zach, you probably even, uh, uh here so i mean it, maybe if someone wouldn't mind commenting more about other change and their experience there so you know, a little bit of indication that that some change apparently you know just there's a new patch no support of anything in the past it sounds like 
maybe a new patch every week as you know like oh crap we fix we, you know we broke something when we fix something and so we we just keep building upon that and releasing and releasing if that sound like that was one extreme i'm sure there's there's some sort of you know um variance there you know where are we on that spectrum um if you, you know and where would ideally you'd like us to be mm -hmm. well, i think the, the the other thing is other chains have multiple different clients you call them clients but node os go node os rust node os c plus plus you know that kind mm -hmm. of uh, thing right so in other chains you know if you don't like the policy the release policy of one client you might use a different one. Uh, obviously we don't have that here we only have one uh, well, so as a, as a telos bp uh can say that i typically run like the stable version previous to the current release uh and sometimes two stable versions behind uh just to avoid any sort of bugs popping up anything like that and um the that that has that's probably there hasn't, hasn't really been any too many api issues but um just having that um like consistency of uh stable releases uh is probably what we're looking for most of all just so that we know that um if we need to upgrade there's uh it, because we tell us we sort of we have to roll out our own custom contracts and everything like that um if there's any changes to uh system contracts or um any base level node or uh, node os changes um so it's just it's good to know that like changes don't happen too frequently in that regard uh personally i'd like to see it if there was at least sort of um two previous stable versions um to uh the main the current one being supported but i realize that that might not be feasible for reasons of um bad budgetary constraints or like um team constraints or whatever so say that say that last thing again you you gave kind of a specific request and i want to make sure i captured it correctly I, I'd like to see uh, two um, previous stable versions released um, from whatever the current stable version is. So, I mean, say the, like 4.0 was released as stable. Um, I'd like to see sort of like 3.2 stable and 3.1 stable also supported. Um, but not necessarily like 3.0 or anything prior to that. And then if it was like 4.1 you know, two was released, then, you know, roll that up another one. So then it's 4.2, 4.0, 3.2. Uh, I think that would probably be sufficient kind of, um, you know, like long-term support, so to speak. <laughs> I, I'm curious, would that include, like if we do, if we roll out a new feature that is a consensus upgrade. So, you know, typically I think we're shooting for that um, in September, or October, or, you know, time frame once a year for the thing. So it, let's say, let's say in that scenario, uh, in September, we, we roll out a new feature that is a consensus level, uh, um, protocol feature that, you know, you can't have an evil by the chain. Sorry, the dog. Um, the, would we then, would we then encourage, um, the, the producers on all the chains, the wait, or let's say, um, the, the next okay april march april or that the notes kind of release i'll be right till then to tell them to have to meet it remember that the view all is not both team well when this is upgrade should use the latest all right sorry sorry was that 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 an open question for the four yeah did open question for the four i mean you'd mentioned two always having two just wondering you know, does that include like when we do a consensus of type of level upgrade? Because currently our, our thought is that, you know, when that happens, you know, what once you enable a protocol feature uh, that's included in a release, you can no longer, you know, the, the old executables, the old releases no longer work with that chain. 
And so if we were to always have two available uh, stable releases that you can use, then we would have to encourage people to not enable a protocol feature a, a, as soon as it's available, but instead wait for you know a release or two before um, be, before it was enabled. Does that make sense? Yeah. Do um, consensus upgrade features normally align with major version upgrades? So like like version two, version three, version four, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. If kind of, but not entirely. We may be using major versions for other conditions, but it will always be that fall timeline that we're targeting for consensus upgrades that would risk forking you from the network. But there may be uh, things that may be considered breaking changes that take place inside of a March-April release. For example, we're going from 3.2 to 4.0 like as we speak, right? Like we're targeting a 4.0 release and it's not September-October. Yeah, and we're, we've done that, at, you know, a number of reasons, but, you know, so in 4.0 release, we're removing API uh, that have been deprecated for a long time. So since, you know, those APIs are going away, you know, we're considering a, a major release. Um, so that, you know, and like what we were just talking about a few moments ago, we're trying to get better about that sort of thing where we're not changing APIs on, on you know, with my releases, but we're doing it, you know, thoughtful and, and within you know, a, a major release time frame. So that's, uh, yeah, that in, in this case, that's, that's what an indication there. And on that topic, we are um, actively exploring some slightly modified taxonomy to help communicate some of the difficulties in adhering to Simber, you know, like patch minor major. Well, that doesn't really speak to that consensus upgrade. So um, we've not officially adopted anything yet, but we're kind of playing with this idea of like a cardinal versus a marginal release and how that intersplices with Simver to communicate when there will be a consensus upgrade as well, just so that we're equipping the community with as much visibility in advance as possible about the impacts of these upgrades. Uh, well, I can say for the last um, Telos upgrade that we did, that uh, was a consensus level upgrade, uh, uh, which I think was to 3.1. Uh, that took us quite a long time um, just to for all the VPs to get their ducks in a row, um, for everyone to be comfortable having tested the changes to included all the upstreams into the TELUS contracts. Um, it, it did take us like quite a long time um, from when the software was initially available. Uh, it would probably be close to like eight months or something like that, I'd say. And just out of curiosity, um, I heard you mention specifically 3.1. Um, are there any bits of that like longer tail that you can attribute to the complexity of us switching over to effectively like a new GitHub org and all of that sort of stuff? Or was it really just like the material differences in the release of the software? Because of course, this was when we had our whole uh, switch over to ENF owned repos and stuff like that. Uh, it was mostly due to the uh, the extra protocol features that needed to be upgraded that would fork out the other um, uh, VPs that weren't on the same uh, software. And also the fact that we needed to uh, upgrade the system contracts as well at the same time, just making sure that all the system contracts were compatible with the the new base version of Node.js. Um, we were a little bit behind in that respect, so we like we kind of did a lot of work all at once to um, with that consensus upgrade. Uh, but yeah, if there was um, if there was going to be kind of like consensus upgrades like every six months or something like that as as part of the release schedule, then we probably wouldn't be able to keep with that kind of pace, I suppose. Like we'd be looking at maybe like every like second version where there was a consensus change or something like that. Um, we right. we would we prefer kind of like less consensus upgrades, I suppose. Um, like uh, as as opposed to sort of like more frequent ones. One hundred percent, and I think that that's why we're targeting that same date range at an annual level, um, just because we definitely have some sensitivity to the level of pain that that introduces. But feedback as we move along will be critical on that front. But 
I will say uh, publicly on behalf of the ENF that there are no present plans at this time to make it an every six months sort of deal. And if anything like that ever were to occur, we would communicate abundantly to to make sure that we weren't introducing a lot of headache for people. Um, again, like we're we're pretty set as a policy for the ENF that moving forward, it'll be that September October time frame that any consensus upgrade does occur. And that doesn't even necessarily suggest that it will require a consensus upgrade. That's just when we would plan to have those be enacted moving forward. And um, just kind of the natural process of us wrapping more uh, rigor and process around uh, the ENF as an entity moving forward. I will say from a multi-network perspective, um, it is good that the networks stagger out. Uh, when they do consensus upgrades as well, because for those of us that are active on all networks or many networks, um, trying to juggle all the networks upgrading to the same feature at the same time is a lot. Um, and you also have the benefit of like network A does this upgrade first and gains experience, gains knowledge, shares knowledge, B benefits from that. Maybe some fixes come along. C then benefits from all of that. And like like right now, we're seeing Wax adopting 3.1. We're going through that process right now. Um, it's how many ever months later, but there's all that institutionalized knowledge now that's being passed in, and it's probably going to be the smoothest rollout of those consensus changes. So reducing the time span in which consensus changes get deployed will compress that that thing that's kind of happening naturally right now and um, providing that benefit. Yeah, so uh, one thing to consider when you're thinking about version support, rather than a strict, it's this version plus that version plus that version, maybe it's this version plus X amount of time on a previous version. Right. And I think that that really comes into play, especially flipping into these upgrades, right? There needs to be a stability period before we say, okay, but like this, this is good to go before we kind of rush another one off to the side. Um, so I think they'll absolutely be considered in like the upgrade process. I don't think we've thought as much about like, as time moves on, whether any of those other things sort of fall off. Um, but that, that is a good thought. All right. Because like you could probably gather consensus from the community as to where people are at and then it's like oh well all the chains are now on 3.2 so well we don't really support 3.1 because everybody's already upgraded right so uh... yeah and i think that that's something that um i think we can absolutely partner with folks like you on um you've received a few messages from me just now, of course, about uh, getting a little bit better visibility into the pain people are putting up with and the versions that they're on, because uh, that has very material implications for us, right? Ideally, we want people upgrading from a version of 3.2 to 4.0 and, um, you know, making that a more painful process because we've not gotten that patch in for you guys is, is very material. So um, maybe I'll take a moment on this call to say, in case you haven't noticed, some of us product people have some very thick skulls and we don't always get uh, the feedback that we need. So feel free to advocate if you're facing that pain routinely and it's keeping you on a previous version. Um, Matthew, you've been a really great advocate um, and I promise I don't ignore you or anything, but if a few people also uh, try and bonk me on the head a few times, uh, we can definitely attempt to be a bit more proactive. And there's also some dashboards I think we should set up to monitor the versions everyone's on so we can ensure that there's not any lurking things really holding people back. I will add more exclamation points in the future. Love it. Well, thank you. I have a question for Aaron. So Aaron, or anyone else this applies to, but Aaron, earlier I heard you say that your team is going to stay on Ubuntu 1804, and if we drop support, you're going to do whatever it takes to continue supporting it because that's what you want to do. I don't know if you were using that as an example to elucidate your point or if you're actually going to stay on Ubuntu 1804, but I'm just curious for you or anyone else who plans to do that. Canonical's ending support for security updates on April 28th. So my question to you and anyone else is, are you planning to pay for the security updates or are you, do you have it, are you planning to like switch to a newer version of Ubuntu or are you just staying on it for now? And why, I guess, out of curiosity. 
the why is largely due to a lack of time um, or resources. Um, and it's not, it's more of uh, it, where it falls in a priority tree. I mean, if we had unlimited resources, sure, we could upgrade and replace those resources. Um, so it's not out of like stubbornness to want to be on a specific version. We're, we're not married to anything specifically. It's just where do we dedicate our time with as much as we do. Um, as far as like security upgrades, I think the nodes that you're going to see, like in our situation where that happens, we don't really care about security upgrades because those nodes are just locked down. Like nobody can access them unless they're accessing it through some sort of tunnel into a data center. Um, so it that kind of stuff is a lesser concern. Uh, compatibility or and or like critical issues that like crash it for some reason would be a lot more critical of an issue. Um, but we run a lot of infrastructure that just like none of you would ever be able to access and we don't upgrade those servers as regularly just because it doesn't need it. So it in the again in that full priority scale just falls really low. Does anyone else have comments on that? Thanks for sharing that with me because that was a, there was a lot of internal discussion on 1804 and frankly still is. So I appreciate you sharing your perspective and your use case. Yeah, not a problem. The struggles of running so much with so little. <laughs> awesome. So as always, I, I appreciate everybody um, chiming in with their feedback. If, it, if anything else occurs to you uh, after the call, of course, don't hesitate to, to reach out um, on Telegram um, in most of the uh, channels where this stuff would be discussed. So you can just add, mention me in one of those or, or direct message me. Find me in the sort of members list there. Um, it is 947. We could, at least where I am, <laughs> we could um, switch over into talking to node types, but I do worry that uh, we would potentially uh, not get very far before needing to stop. So I will sort of take the the vote on whether we should, um, you know, hand hand the mic over to Daniel now, or if we should try to get a little bit done on the node types discussion. All right. In absence of feedback, I'm going to make the recommendation that we uh, that I hand it over to Daniel and stop now so that we don't kind of just uh, scratch a surface and, and not get any depth. So, Daniel. I'll second that. Thank you, Brian. Um, another good discussion. Yeah, we didn't get into the special note types, but that's okay. We'll save that for next week. Um, so, all right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. And we'll see you next week. And, uh, and maybe not you, Brian. Catch up offline, figure out what's happening with you next week. See you guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.